Hello guys, in today's tutorial I'm going to start a new series on making a clone of Crossy Road. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to, to create a new project. I will call it Froggy Road. Just because. And you may see here in the background I've got this uh, program open. It's called Magical Voxel, it's free. And I use it to make some of the models. I haven't made all the models yet. This is the this frog over here is the player model. Uh, by the way, I won't show you how to make the models, but I'll make them free for you. I'll put the links in the description. And of course, I'll put also the link for the program. Okay, and in today's tutorial, we're going to take care of the movement and of the rotation of the our character. So let's first add a, a 3D object, which is a plane, something for it to move on. And I'm going to create a folder for the models. And I'm going to drag these three files over here, the frog files, and I will make them available for you into the models. There you go. Now you got here the model, the frog model. And now I can just drag the frog into here. And as you can see, it's a big ass frog. And that's because each one of these voxels is a 1x1 one one in Unity. So 1, 2, 3, 5 wide and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 long. So if we want it to, to fit in only one unit, you have to do 1 divided by 0 0.8, which is around 1 point something. So we'll round it up to 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 so that the, our guy fits only in one unit. So there you go, now we have our frog there. Now we're going to also change the camera. So let's go into the camera, make it first be orthographic, just like so. Change the rotation to 45 and to 45. This will be the isometric camera, but I can also change that, so let me just center the camera correctly. So we got here our, our scene, and I'm going to rotate even more the, the Y, so that it seems like if you press W, you want to go that way, which is now it's happening correctly. Uh, as you can see, there's happening this issue with the camera that it it's cutting here, and that's because the camera, as you can see, is way too low, so just drag it a bit. Here and there you go, the problem is solved. Now on to our frog. We got our frog, we imported this, but this as you can see here it's a an empty game object, so I'm just going to drag this into here, and this will be our prefab. This will be where we change everything. This will be called the frog. So let's add the the player controller in here. We should be controlling the movement and whatnot. Open up Mono Develop with it. Okay, now we got Mono Develop opened. Let's start doing the programming. So first, we want to control our frog using the WASD keys. So we're going to use the vertical axis and the horizontal axis, which correspond to touching one of those keys. So if I do if input dot get axis raw say the horizontal axis is different from zero so if we're pressing a key then we want to do something else if we're not pressing the a or the d keys we want to check the same thing but vertically so input dot get axis row vertical different from zero which i forgot there there you go now here what we're going to set inside these conditions First off, we want to change to set the direction we want our player to go. So, we're going to create a variable here, public factor 3. Next direction, which tells the direction of the next, the next uh, position. And now here, we do the next direction equals to input dot get axis row horizontal and you want to set like I said the horizontal we want to move the player to the sides so in this case if I want the player to move that way moving horizontally means moving the blue axis so for that is one and for here it will be minus one so the blue axis is the, is the Z so it will be minus Z since the axis is pointing that way and not that way so this is the Z. 
and the same thing for the x but now the axis is positive because the, the axis is pointing to the right so it's positive so this will be the positive and that will be the negative so press w to go forward s to go backwards and here it's vertical and kill the minus sign there you go now we've set the position I'm going to also put here a function that we want both things to execute which will be the void move like so and let's make it execute in both functions move and move and what this function will do is just make the player jump this won't actually be where the player moves but I just want to make it like this way and to make the player jump we're going to use a rigid body so I'm going to add a rigid body to our model rigid body there you go and let's now here use the rigid body so to make things simple rigid body equals rb now we're going to get a reference for it so that we don't only need to do this once to spare our computer's memory there you go and now do rb dot add force and the force will be zero then something on the y which is a variable now public float jump force let's make it equal to a hundred so here jump force and then zero again like so and right now if I play you'll see that the player jumps but that's the only thing he does as you can see if I press W he's jumping but he's not even colliding with the plane so let's first off add a box collider to it there you go and as you can see the box collider is added around all of the our, all of our character and now you'll see that he doesn't fall through the plane and that he jumps uh, very high but he's not moving that's because we we didn't tell him to we only said okay we want him to move in here into here but we don't tell him okay now move it so now we're going to check if our, we should move our player in here and this is going to be an if clause so if the transform dot position it's different from what it was plus the direction so first we have to get a a variable that tells us what it was so we do public vector free current position and we set here the current position equals to transform dot position and now in here we want to check if the transform position is different from what it should be then we move him here there else well as we do all of this stuff all of this stuff like so okay and now here what what is the position it should be well it should be in current position plus next direction uh, well you would think that's, that this is it but it's almost it it's not really it because sometimes imagine that you're moving say on a place that sometimes has a cube like a something like so and if he moves into the ledge its y position would get bigger so here it's zero here it will be 0.2 and that would make so that this condition would never happen so what we're going to do is only check for the x and the z the y will will not check if its position is different on the y or not so to do that we do new vector free and this vector free is the current position dot x and in the y it's a transform dot position dot y and the current position dot z and you can let this here and we add to it the next direction only components on the x or on the z okay now we got that done now i want to make it move so we do after free 
dot move towards I want to move the current which is the transform dot position to the target which is this exact line we put in here so you can copy it into here and then we also need the max distance delta which is basically the speed so I'll put here public float speed let's make it equal to 5 I, I don't remember what's the scale and I put here speed times time dot delta time to make it normalized to weird frame rates and of course to make we have to make this equal to the transform up position like so okay and before we play there's uh, two little things that you need to do which is we are resetting the current position but we're not resetting the next direction so I got to put here next direction equals vector to three dot zero and this way whenever we reach a position if we hadn't do this and we ha if we hadn't touched any any keys it will go immediately anyways into this one since this is different from that because this would, be, would not be zero and this way it fixes it so it will stop every time it reaches a position and also I also want to make the current position dot transform equal to transform a position on the start so that whenever wherever the, is a position that the frog is right now is also the current position on the beginning let's hit play and hopefully all is working fine as you can see our frog jumps around and it jumps around as you can see it, sometimes it floats on the air we can fix that by just changing the jump force to something lower maybe 50 and there you go now it jumps less and of course and as you can see here the position is changing sometimes into weird values which is just because you know the Unity sometimes uses approximation instead of the real values to, which is what you want but the rest is all fine as you can see everything's working fine uh, aside aside from the rotation of course which will be changing right after and that's a that's a quick fix to, to make that happen so let's do this equals to math f dot round current position dot x there you go and just like that that will be rounded up or down to the value we want and current position dot y and here as well bam okay now let's take care of the rotation the rotation we're going to do something very similar with this one so we do transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot rotate towards you could also use lerp if you want but i prefer root rotate tower since it's linear the other one is not and li like we did in here we do transform dot rotation and where do we want to move well this is the tricky part we will want to move to wherever the the, the vector the direction vector is pointing so what we do is quaternion dot look rotation and we want to look to the, the direction that the vector is facing so we want to look into that and with a certain speed we shall put here public float speed rotation and let's make it equal to 100 I, read, I don't know yet what that number should be speed rotation times time dot delta time and let's see how that does And as you can see it, rotates, it doesn't rotate much, I want it to rotate even more. So just change the speed rotation here, maybe to a thousand, let's see. There you go, now as you can see it fully rotates to whatever you want. But as you can see the rotation is wrong. When I want to move that way it's, it's rotating sideways. And that's, because, that's the way I made the, the model. I made the model pointing this way, if I made them pointing in another way it should work better. But um, 
since I did it like this, there's a simple fix in the code that you can do, which is adding first here a public float rotation offset. And here we want to make the quaternion dot loop rotation face to this vector, but we want this vector to be rotated in a certain way. So we do quaternion dot Euler and we want to rotate it on the y axis, which is the axis that makes it rotate like so. So here we will put the rotation offset and the zero and you want to multiply this by the next direction uh, by the way it's very important that you put this before the vector else it won't work and now we'll see that if I change here the offset to something like 90 because if, if you see you use moving 90 degrees less that, we sh that it should so I put here 90 you'll see that it moves it rotates correctly but of course I forgot to change the speed back to whatever it was so I put 1000 here there you go and now as you can see we got our frog moving correctly and sometimes he still floats that's easily fixed with uh, by changing its jump force a bit and we can do that here right now but this is it, this was this drill. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one where we will be taking care of the collisions. See you next time.